This is an application built on ICP, the decentralized internet. Now, you may know some other ICPs like Insane Clown Posse, Impressive Cats Pooping, and Internet Computer. Today's video is focused on Internet Computer and not that other stuff, even though that is very interesting. Now, in this ICP review, we are going to go over what is ICP, what makes it different, what's going on in their ecosystem, the tokenomics, and my personal opinion, so stick around until the end to find out more. Now, this video is just to share my personal experience and research with ICP. It is not sponsored. I'm not saying you should invest in anything. I'm just showing you what I learned, and that doesn't mean you should buy anything. It is not financial advice. And for full disclosure, I do own some ICP and tokens within that ecosystem. So yeah, stick around to find out why as we go over some of the things going on with Internet Computer. What is the Internet Computer? Now, you could read the website, you could look at all these technical documentation, you could watch these technical interviews, but that's too technical. So I'm just going to simplify this for everyone in a way I think you can understand. And the internet computer is literally the internet computer. You, they are decentralizing the internet. People can set up these nodes that are individual servers that host different products, services, uh, storage on another layer of the internet. But why do we need that? We already have the existing internet. And the problem with today's internet is that it is very centralized. You can only get it from a few different providers. They track your data, they sell your data, and there's also censorship. There are things that are region blocked. Let's say you're in China, you're not gonna get Google, YouTube. Uh, let's say you're in Indonesia, you're not gonna get Reddit. And there's just a lot of different services that aren't available globally. And the internet computer takes all of that away by decentralizing the internet. So that's what it is as a high level thing. And now that there is a decentralized internet, a lot of different applications are being built on top of that. And that all starts off with your internet identity. And how it works is you create an internet identity which comes with your blockchain wallet and you use that to connect to different applications. You can think of your internet identity kind of like your email address or your Google account. And you know how you can use your Google accounts to log into various websites. Well, that's how the internet identity works. Once you have your internet identity, you can use that to log into various social media platforms and start using those applications instantly. So for example, this is open chat. It is a lot like Telegram and Discord, but built on the internet computer. If I wanna log in, I can log in with my internet identity since I've already created an account. Um, this doesn't really need to be private. I just hit continue. And that internet identity is tied to how I log into my regular computer stuff, whether that's a pin code, whether it's facial recognition or a fingerprint. So now that I've logged into open chat, I can just jump into different channels. I can join them. As you can see, there's no wallet pop-up for me to uh, verify or connect my wallet. I can just start typing and joining the conversation. But as you can see, this is a blockchain application. It is technically gasless on the user side. So that is one of the features on internet computer and that's gasless transactions, which are really prepaid transactions. And now that we have that simplified explanation, we can look into a little more technical stuff. These are all the nodes that are running on the internet computer. And you can kind of think of them as servers. The closer you are to one of these nodes, the faster experience you're gonna have. So they are still growing out their network. And you can see there are over a thousand node machines at the moment. There are 37 subnets. And to explain the subnets, they're very similar to how Avalanche C chains work or Polkadot parachains. It is a blockchain running within a blockchain. So you have your internet computer, you have the main blockchain processing all the transactions, validating everything. And then you have a subnet, which is like a parallel chain also running transactions, but in a different way. So with these subnets, they can be businesses or private entities that want to make whatever's happening there more customized. If they're a business, they're gonna wanna keep those transactions private. So to sum all of that up, the internet computer is blockchain as a service, open internet services, 
and your Web3 ID. So that is your identity that you take between different decentralized applications where you can start using those services immediately without having to create a new account and in many cases without having to pay for gas fees. ICP tokenomics, what is the ICP coin for? So for token utility, we have the usual suspects here. One, it's for governance, but to get those governance voting rights, you have to be staking your ICP. And to stake your ICP, you're gonna have to go through the NNS dashboard, the exact same place where you created your uh, internet identity. So you would go to ICP here, you would stake your neurons, which is your ICP, and then, uh, yeah, they have a lot of different terms for things here. So it's uh, there is a learning curve. And if I want to stake one ICP, I can do that for either zero days or up to eight years. The longer you stake, the stronger your voting rights. But again, you have to be super bullish on ICP to do that. Otherwise, you take on a lot of risk. And you can see here, we can do zero days. We can do one day. We could do 100 days. We could do 1,000 days. And the more you do, uh, the more voting power you get. So at uh, 1,000 days, my voting power is not just at 1, but 1.34. So you do get more value out of your tokens, and you also get more rewards. But we don't know what it's going to look like eight years from now, so that is a lot of risk you're taking on. If you do want to stake your ICP, maybe do it for short increments while doing a small amount for the very long term. At the moment, there are no liquid staking services for ICP, but I heard that some might be launching later this year. Now, ICP is also used to pay for internet computer resources, and these coins get burned. So if you take a look at the deflationary and inflationary mechanisms of ICP, if a lot of people are using a service, they're gonna have to pay for those network fees by paying an ICP. And any ICP that is used to pay for storage and compute gets burned. So that is the deflationary side of ICP. If we see a lot of users, we see a lot of people using their services at a large scale, then there are gonna be a lot of ICP coins getting burned. So if we look at the ICP dashboard, we can see that the total burned has been 157,000 ICP, while the circulating supply has been increasing pretty consistently. Additionally, there are still tokens to be unlocked from the strategic round and the seed and private sale for the next year and a half. So there are gonna be more tokens entering the ecosystem. If we look at the profitability of ICP as it is right now, it's not very profitable. So they are at a $5.58 billion market cap. The revenue over the past 30 days has been $23,000. And uh, that revenue annualized is at about 280,000. So that looks really bad. Right now, it is not a good business model. They are losing money because uh, anyone holding or staking is getting diluted, but the 180 day price performance has been very positive. And that's because ICP has been getting a lot of attention for some of their projects. Their ecosystem has been growing drastically. And in 2024, if you watch my other interview with the ICP Hong Kong hub, over 300 dApps are gonna be launched this year. So for my personal thoughts, I think there is a lot of opportunity in the applications that are being built within the ICP ecosystem. As for the coin itself, as you know, a lot of projects are gasless. The gas fees are pretty low on the network. So holding the ICP token for most people doesn't really make sense unless they start doing transactions at a very high scale. But the good thing is ICP is very different. Once you create an ID, it's very easy to jump between decentralized applications. And with a lot of applications being gasless, it's gonna be a lot easier for new users to join ICP rather than any other ecosystem because you need to set up a wallet. It's a little more technical. You need to fund it. You need to do bridging, just that entire process. Now I personally see a lot of crypto and these blockchains fighting for the same users for the next generation of users to get onboarded. We're gonna need a simplified process without those barriers of having to pay for things. 
So I think that is the opportunity that ICP is presenting itself. Now, I'm not saying to buy anything, but I am saying to take a look and watch their growth and maybe jump into their ecosystem because you might have a good experience there and you might be eligible for some airdrops because you're not going to be early to ICP because some of the early investors bought the coin for a lot less than one dollar. But uh, a lot of the opportunities come from jumping into these ecosystems early as they're beginning to grow. Now, ICP can be successful if they launch some very popular dApps and do transactions at scale. And it's not impossible for them to be profitable because that's the same business model that Amazon had where they lost a lot of money. Same thing with Facebook until they started turning on the different revenue schemes, whether it's advertising, whether it's premium features uh, for all types of different people within their ecosystem. At least that's just my opinion. That's how I see it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. So if this video was helpful, feel free to hit that thumbs up. And with that, I hope you got your full value for today.